You want, you need help? No. I need you to get back there. Okay, my hand's out of the way. I'm on, but I'm not hearing it. Huh. Yeah, there it is. All right, so we're getting recorded. Project? We're getting recorded, apparently. He's going to adjust me. I'm sorry. Apologies. There we are. There you are. I know you can hear me back there even without the mic, but it's for recording purposes. So, hallelujah. Wow. I uh, I feel like the Holy Ghost has me, uh, oh, everywhere. <laughs> everywhere, everywhere. <clears throat> but I'm just going to jump right out there. We were talking about last week uh, Moses uh, coming to God and saying he wanted to see his ways. He, he pleaded to God and said, show me your ways. Show me your glory. Show me your ways. And do you know that that required some effort on his part? That required effort on Moses' part. It wasn't just make a petition, Lord, show me your ways, and then sit back and do nothing. That's not how it went down. We looked at Exodus chapter 33, and it said when Moses put out that petition to God, then God gave him some instruction, and he said, there's a place by me, stand there. Well, that required that Moses got up early in the morning and went up to that secret place. That wasn't an easy task. That wasn't just wake up, wipe the sleep out of his eyes, and say, okay, God, talk to me. In that, in that case, God gave him specific instruction. Do you know that Jesus found himself looking for God's ways? He, as a young boy at age 11 years old, he's already looking for God's ways. Because he disappears when he and his family went to Jerusalem, as they did every year. And when the family leaves, now they, tr they traveled in large groups. All of the family traveled together. So that means, like my family, there's seven of us kids and 27 grandkids, and I don't know how many other great-grandkids and so on and so forth. But if we all travel together, one of the children might tend to float off and go with sister so-and-so. Right? Yeah. So at the, at the third day, they, they realize, have you seen Jesus? I haven't seen him. Have you seen him? I haven't seen him. Well, oh, he's probably back with Mary Lou. <laughs> so, so they go back. Yeah, home alone. They go back and they find that he is not with any of the family. Come on. Here they thought he was with the family. He's all good. That's how they traveled. But now he is not there. So they're going to go. We're going to go to the last place we saw him. So they end up back at the temple where he is seated with the scholars. And they're all fascinated not only at at. at, at him listening to the scholars, but the interaction that they're having with one another. 11 years old. He's already seeking his father. And that continued. This is a lifestyle he's developing. Time and time again, throughout the Gospels, it shows that Jesus resorted to a quiet place. He went up the mountain to pray. In the middle of the night, he's in the mountain praying. Early in the morning, he's in the mountain praying. This wasn't just a once in a while kind of thing. This was a lifestyle. Moses was able to see God's ways because it was a lifestyle. It wasn't a one-time thing. It, it was a lifestyle. Seeking God's ways is a lifestyle. It is pressing in to begin to interact with him seated at his feet and say, talk to me about this. Talk to me about this situation. I know that I'm not seeing it the way you see it. See, that's what it's all about is, is knowing God's ways so that we don't lean on our own ways. In Isaiah, 
And I feel like the Lord personally said this to me. You can borrow it if you want to. But I feel like the Lord personally said this to me. He said, don't think like everybody else thinks. That's Isaiah 55. Don't think like everybody else thinks. Don't think like your mama thinks. Don't think like your sister thinks. Don't think like the news thinks. Don't think like your teacher thinks. Don't think like your best friend thinks. Don't think like the world thinks. Don't think like everybody else thinks. Think like I think. I'm telling you that, that he spoke that to me. It's new living in that, in that translation, new living translation. But it's a going across the board. In order to know his ways, we got to get away from the stinking thinking. We got to stop thinking like men and women. We have to think like God. Yes. We have to. I'm going to read it in the King James. I'm going to start with verse 6, Isaiah 55, 6. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord. And he, the Lord, will have mercy on him. That's what we discovered last week when Moses said, show me your ways. God showed him his mercy. So let him return to the Lord and he'll have mercy on him. And return to our God and he will abundantly pardon him. See, that's good news for somebody that doesn't know Jesus. Everybody thinks God's mad at them. But if, if they turn to him, he'll show mercy to them. And then he says, verse 9, For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven and returns not thither, don't you love that word, thither, but waters the earth and makes it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. How many times you've heard that used for offering message? But right here, he's talking about something else. Verse 11, so shall my word be. He's saying, for as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven. Y'all don't know a lot about snow, but I do. <laughs> Coming from Minnesota, I know a lot about snow. Snow comes down. And, it, and rain, I know we don't know a lot about rain around here either, a little bit. We know a little bit about rain. We Minnesotans look forward to the rain, but I know some other people, I won't mention their names, don't like any rain at all. But I'm a gardener and I need rain. I need the rain. I need the rain. <laughs> so, verse 10, as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven and it doesn't return, it doesn't go back up, it waters the earth. It waters the earth before it evaporates, before it does all that stuff. It waters the earth. That's why it comes down. The rain comes to water the earth. And it makes it fo bring forth and bud. So the water comes, those of us that are gardeners, we know the water comes and things start to green up. Things start to push out of the ground. Right? Things start to sprout up. I was given last year at this time, I was given a beautiful plant, calla lily. And it was purple. And it said on the instruction that if I put it in the ground, um, it, it would come back next year. Well, sure enough, here it is a year later. I've been watering that, that area where I put that plant. I know where it is. Because all you do is you put the little root thing in the bottom. So there's nothing on top to give evidence of where that thing is. So I put a little rock there to remind myself, water. Water. I don't see nothing, but I'm going to water it. I'm going to water it. I'm going to water it. And sure enough, now it's about this tall. And there's a little purple blade in it. So the, the bloom is coming too. One year later. But I've been watering it and watering it. So the rain makes forth and bud. That it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So the produce from the rain gives seed and bread. Because the plant is what you can eat, and the plant also produces seed. And now he's making a comparison. 
so shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. This is God. He says, so shall my word be that goes out of my mouth. It will not return unto me void, empty, dead, useless. My word out of my mouth will not come back to me empty, dead, and useless. But it will accomplish what I please. I'm sending my word out for a purpose, and it will accomplish its purpose. And it will prosper in the thing I send it. So if he sends the word into you, it'll prosper in you. If he sends the word into a situation, it'll prosper in that situation. And he uses us to send the word forth. He speaks to our heart, we speak it out our mouth into the situation, and it will prosper. Even if it doesn't look like for a whole year, you just keep water in it. You keep speaking to it. You keep sowing the water into the ground, and all of a sudden, just like my plant, you'll see it. But if I would have said, oh, there's nothing there, and gave up on watering it, because it's not raining from the sky right now, I'm watering it. But if I didn't, guess what? There's no, no, no growth. That can be seen. And that's in context of my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways. He's talking to not born again men. He's talking to Isaiah who was not born again. My thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways. For as the heavens are higher, so are my ways higher than your ways. And my thoughts higher than your thoughts. But we can know his ways. So our ways can then be his ways, yes. right? Yes. Even though they, they are higher than ours, if we begin to think like God, then we'll have the same ways. Yes. Turn with me to Joshua. Joshua, now remember, the Lord has given me, in, in Isaiah 8, the Lord has given me a strong warning not to think like everyone else. That's for all of us. The Lord has given us a strong warning not to think like everyone else. That's, that's Isaiah 8. Isaiah 8. Now we're going to Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. Talking about the word going forth. This is what God told Joshua. Joshua has risen up in place of Moses. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now Joshua is on the scene. This book of the law, God's telling jo Joshua, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. But you will meditate therein day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. This verse here is saying, talk like God, think like God, act like God, and then you will push forward and break out. That's what have good success means. It means you'll push forward and break out, just like that plant did in the dirt. You will push forward and break out. You will bloom. How? Because you talk like God, you think like God, you act like God. It says it right here. This book of the law, God's word, will not depart, meaning it's always going to be in your mouth. You're always going to be speaking. That's what it means, not depart. You will always be speaking God's word. Don't let it depart. Don't let it disappear from your mouth. Don't start saying what the world says. Don't start saying what the news said. Don't start saying what daddy said. Don't start saying what your body says. Say what God says. Don't let it depart from your mouth. So there's talk like God. Then it says, you will meditate therein day and night. Meditate, think like God. Meditate literally means to mutter to yourself over and over. Mutter to you. You're doing it all the time. You are. We all do it. We all are meditating on something, muttering to ourselves over and over and over. The, pr the trouble is we get caught in stinking thinking and we start muttering about the wrong thing. I wonder what they meant by that. I wonder what's wrong with me now. My knee hurts. What next? Uh, well, 
that report on the news was very bad. Now what am I going to do? Am I even going to be able to buy groceries? What are we going to do if there is no groceries? I went to the store the other day, and there wasn't the milk that I wanted. There wasn't this that I wanted. There wasn't that. There wasn't this. And I can't believe how much I'm paying for gas. And da 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 his word, mutter his word, his word, only his word, not the news word, God's word, God's word. Meditate on the book of the law, meditate on his word. His word says I would prosper. His word says I'm the head, not the tail. His word says by his stripes I am healed. But his word says he is Jehovah Jireh. He takes care of me. He sees ahead and makes provision. He fed, the crow. He fed Elijah with a crow. He can feed me with a pigeon. Yeah. Yeah. This, this is the correction we have to make. We cannot continue in the zone we're in by muttering the junk. We have to receive this and say, you know what? I've been loose lips. Loose lips sink ships. And it happens. Especially if you got junk going in, you're going to have junk coming out. Junk going in, junk coming out. We don't even have the news on at our house. We don't. Now, my husband, every once in a while, he might get something on his Google, and, he, and, and he'll have an update of whatever. But I always say, don't even tell me. I don't even want to know. I don't need the junk. Because it feeds you. It feeds your head with thoughts, and then you got something else to mutter about. But it says we're to mutter or meditate on his word. Medi meditate on his word. So we talk like God. We think like God. Consequently, then, we'll act like God. See, if we're talking like God and thinking like God, we're going to act like God. Yeah. With my family situation, as you, most of you know, my mother passed away and went on to be with Jesus, and she's rejoicing. It, you know, it says <laughs> it's better to be absent from the body is present with the Lord. And Paul said that's far better, to be absent from the body is present with the Lord. My mom just stepped over. So it says, he said, it's better. This is the Lord's word. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So my muttering is my mom's present with the Lord. That's what I'm muttering. My sister, some of my sisters are, woe is me, what are we going to do? A lot of, lot of it. They're muddling instead of muttering. So the Lord has impressed upon me now there's a group chat with the family, so I'm feeding the word every day with another scripture. The, the Lord said to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Mom's present with the Lord. Isn't that wonderful? We can do that with every subject in our life. You can do that with your bank account. You can do that with your body. You must do it with your bank account. You must do it with your body. You must do it with your relationships. You must in order to push forward and break out. Yeah. In, in, the, he, in the King James, it says good success, but it literally means to push forward and break out. What are you pushing forward? You're pushing forward everything that's resisting you, everything that's coming against you. You push forward and break out by talking like God, thinking like God, acting like God. So when you face a situation and you want to give somebody a piece of your mind, you go, check that, check that. They don't need a piece of my mind. They need a piece of mercy. That's what they need. They need a piece of mercy right here. And I'm that peace. Yeah. Because he said, and we looked at this last week, those who are, have been shown mercy are who he will show mercy with. So you're the agent of mercy because he's shown you mercy. So now he'll use you to show mercy to somebody else. 
he used somebody else to show you mercy in the first place. When God says he show, shows himself merciful, he uses people to do it. So you've been shown mercy by someone else. Now it's your turn to show mercy to someone else. So when somebody you think warrants a piece of your mind, you say, no, they're going to get a piece of the word instead. They're going to get mercy instead. And that means that you have to think like God thinks. You can't think like you used to think. You can't think like men think or the majority or the popular opinion. You can't, you can't think like that. You have to abandon that way of thinking. So how does that happen? It doesn't just happen because you say, oh, I see it in the word. Okay, I'm going to talk like God, think like God, act like God. No, you've got to hang out with him. Because the more you hang out with him, the more you start to act like him. The more you hang out with him, you're going to act like whoever you hang out with. You are. Yeah. You're going to act like whoever you hang out with. So who do you want to act like? Who do you want to act like? Do you want to act like the, the, the movie programs you're watching, the shows you're watching, the radio you're watching, the news you're watching, the friends you're hanging with? Well, they're Christian. Yeah, but are they talking like Christians? Are they acting like Christians? Are they drinking like Christians? Doping like Christians? Sleeping around like Christians? Come on now. There's a whole lot of people that have slapped a label across their forehead and said they're a Christian, but they're still sleeping around, they're still doping around, they're still drinking around. They are not acting like God because they ain't hanging with him. You hang with God, you act like God. You hang like God, you think like God. It's true. I didn't, I didn't make this stuff up. It's in the Bible. <laughs> It's in the Bible. You want to act like God, you hang like God. You hang around with him. And you let him show you his ways. Let him show you his ways. And that's all day long. All day long. Not once in a while. D David wrote in Psalm, on Psalm 63, 6, When I remember thee upon my bed and meditate on thee in the night watches. How many times I've heard Christians say, oh, I didn't sleep at all last night. My head was just a spinning. Well, take advantage of that and go back to the word. You know what, thoughts? You're not going to run in here any old way you want to. We're going to talk about God right now. Isn't he wonderful? Isn't he merciful? Doesn't he take good care of you? Jesus shed his blood for you. He's got his hand on your life. He sent Holy Spirit to live on the inside of you, and the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives in you. And he's got everything planned out for your life because he's got a great purpose for you. You hear that, soul? Now you go to sleep because it says he'll give his beloved sleep. And it'll be peaceful, and it'll be sweet. Yeah. But you lay there and run all this stuff. What am I going to do tomorrow? What am I going to do next week? What are we going to do about that? What are we going to do about this? What are we going to do about that? That, 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 that? But you have the power, because it's within your control, your sphere of influence, to think on what you're going to think. But you have to exercise. It doesn't just, you have to exercise. You have to do it. Focus. Meditate, meditate, meditate. Everybody say meditate. meditate. That's not the um, that's not what that is. It's talking to yourself, muttering to yourself, telling yourself the truth. God loves me. He's for me. He lives in me. Christ in me, the hope of glory. Tell yourself the truth. Too many times we're telling ourselves lies. That's not God's way. God only speaks the truth. Yeah. Even telling herself, my body hurts, that's a lie. Sure. I'm sick, really. Then if you say you're sick, then what do you do with Jesus took all your infirmities, bore your sicknesses? What, what do you do with that? Yeah, who's lying, him or you? Now, I get that your bodies get attacked, but then you better start saying it the right way. Don't take it as ownership, I'm sick, I'm not sick. My body's under attack. There's an invader, intruder alert. Yeah. 
Intruder alert. I'm going to go off on a little tangent here because the Lord showed this to me and it'll help all of you. God gave Adam the authority to name things. And when he named things, they took on the character that they were to have. He didn't just call lion a lion because he liked the name lion. No, it's setting the authority and the reputation and the character of the thing that he's naming. He named Eve, Eve, mother of all living. <clears throat> and so, to this day, Adam, man, is still naming things. When COVID came out, it was named COVID, right? Then another strain comes out, what else? Then what happens? They name it something else, the Delta whatever, right? Omicron, and then the B-52, I call it a B-52 bomber, I don't know, I made it up. <laughs> B-52 bomber. But the point is, they named it, and it become what they said it would become. They named it, it became what they said it would become because they have the authority to do it. So God told me when something attacks my body, I have to rename it. I don't need to agree with the world of what it is. He told me you call it an intruder because it's an intruder and your body knows what to do with intruders. Your body was built to deal with intruders. The minute you say there's an intruder alert, your body knows what to do. And all your cells get in line and start to attack the intruder. Yes. You have to rename it. Rename it. You're the one that has authority. You still have the authority. I was free. Rename some things. All right, let's go to... Uh, James, we're talking about God's ways. God's ways higher. We want our ways to be on the same plane with God. We want to think like God, talk like God, act like God. We're not God, but we are his agents on the earth. Yes. Hear me, I'm not saying we are God. I'm saying we are his representatives on the earth. Empowered like Jesus was empowered yes. by the Holy Ghost. And we have the same authority that Jesus had when he was on the earth because God gave it to him. And then Jesus said, all power has been given unto me and I give it unto you. And you're seated with me in heavenly places, which are a place of authority. And he's made all things under your feet. Well, guess what part of the body we are? We're not the head. Jesus is the head. We're the body. What, where are the feet? Are the feet coming out of the side of the head? No, they're coming out of the body. And it says all things have been put under his feet. That's part of the body. So that means all things are under our feet. Our feet. All things are under our feet. So there's a way that we have to conduct our lives. But it's got to be God's way. Remember, he said, don't think like everybody else thinks. So turn with me to James chapter 1. James chapter 1. I'll be there in a quick second. God's ways. We're all about God's ways. <clears throat> well, we'll start with verse 5. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that gives to all men liberally and abradeth not, meaning he doesn't scold you when he asks for it, and it shall be given to him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. Nothing wavering. For he that wavers is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think he shall receive anything of the Lord. Verse 8. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. That simply means one day you're thinking like God, the next day you're thinking like the man thinks. One day you're thinking about, based on popular opinion, well, you know, they say. And then the next day you're thinking what God says. 
but that makes you unstable in all your ways, a double-minded. It literally means two-spirited, two-spirited. A two-spirited man is unstable in all his ways. Unstable in all his ways. So how do we correct that? We get to know God's ways. And then we adhere to his ways. And then we think like God thinks. We talk like God talks. We act like God acts. Then we're not unstable and not, we're not wavering back and forth between the two opinions. We're right down the middle of the road where the way God thinks. Remember in Isaiah, don't think like everyone else thinks. So let's go there, Isaiah chapter 8. Back to Isaiah chapter 8. Isaiah chapter 8. Remember I talked about naming things. This is uh, King James, starting with verse 11. The Lord spoke this to me with a strong hand and instructed me that I should not walk in the way of this people, saying, Say not a confederacy to all them to whom this people shall say a confederacy. Neither fear ye their fear nor be afraid. The word confederacy there is conspiracy. Conspiracy. Say not conspiracy to all them to whom the people say conspiracy. Remember, he's saying, he's given us a strong, under a strong hand, do not walk in the way of this people. I guess that's not King James, is it? Pretty close. Exactly. Exactly. Say not conspiracy to all them to whom this people say conspiracy, neither fear ye their fear. Do not fear what they fear. How much plainer can it get? Do not fear what they fear. Let him be your fear. Let him be your respect. See, that's what fear means. Fear means you're respecting a situation more than you're respecting God. You're respecting what men say about something more than you're respecting what God says about something. I don't want to be on that side. I don't want to be on the side where I'm aligning with what the world says. You better fear that. That'll get you. No, you better fear God because God will get you. I used to hate that statement. I heard it. I heard it. I heard it from somebody I love dearly. You better watch out. God will get you. But it's talking about a reverence. Yeah. People are revering things all over the world. Well, you're just a hater. You don't this, you don't that, you don't this. Everybody's entitled. Everybody, 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 everybody. No, no, no. We're not to reverence and honor what they reverence and honor. They love the creature more than they love the creator. Go to Romans 8. I knew he was going to take me here. Romans 8. We are not thinking like the world thinks. We are allowing him to show us his ways, to change the way we think. So we're in alignment with God, so we're not wavering back and forth. Romans chapter, did I say eight? I didn't mean to say eight. Yeah. And we're going to chapter one. So this is Paul writing to the Romans, and um, there were... Jewish believers and Gentile believers. Mostly Jewish or mostly Gentile believers because that's who Paul was called to. But he loved the Jewish people so he still preached to them. And in every letter he's like dual writing. He writes to the Jew and the Gentile. So but here he says, um, verse 11, I long to see you that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift to the end you may be established. That That is... I, that I may be comforted together with you by the mutual faith, both of you and me. There's your answer why we do church. Right there, those two verses, that's a side note. I long to see you that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift. You cannot receive spiritual gifts on TV, on YouTube. You can watch the message tonight that we preach today, but you're not going to receive a spiritual gift. That's face-to-face. -face. It says it right here. 
I long to, Paul saying, I long to see you that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift to the end that you may be established. So you'll get a foundation. You'll be solid. And then it says, that is, that I may be comforted together with you by the mutual faith, both of you and me. We share faith. I need to be strengthened. You need to be strengthened. We come together to strengthen one another. Give and take. Now, I would not have you ignorant, brethren. Oftentimes, I purpose to come unto you, but I was let hitherto that I might have some fruit among you, even as among other Gentiles. So we know he's talking to Gentiles. All right. Now we're going to skip on down. Um, verse 17. Therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. This is talking about people that are rejecting the truth. They're rejecting the truth. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. That part of God is revealed in them. Even the ones that are rejecting the truth. God is revealed in them. Just by being a man. Just by being born. Just by breathing. God is being revealed in them. For God has showed it unto them. Everyone is shown God. He showed it to them. Everyone. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead. That's three part. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. So they are without excuse. They. Who's they? The ones that are rejecting the truth. They're without excuse. Why? Because God showed it to them. They have no excuse. Verse 21. Because Now remember, we're talking about God's ways, not man's ways. We need to think like God thinks, not like the world thinks. About every subject. Even the most sensitive subjects that the world is bombarding us with. We need to think like God thinks. Verse 21, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Neither were they thankful, but they became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Who are we talking about? People that are rejecting God. And they changed the glory of the uncorruptible God. Only God gives us glory. They changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man. And to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. They're worshiping other gods. They're worshiping one another. We've been hearing a lot about over the Wednesday nights, putting God first, worshiping God only, him only you will serve, him only you will seek, him only you will honor. And we're talking about here people that have rejected God, and they're worshiping each other, and they're worshiping other things. Wherefore, verse 24, God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie, and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their woman, women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men leaving the natural use of the women burned in their lust one toward another. Men with men, 
working that which is unseemingly and receiving in themselves that recompense of the error which was met. That means disease have ravaged their body. Disease ravaged their body. Why? Because men with men, women with women. God gave them over to their worship. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, unmerciful, unmerciful. Who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death. They not only do the same, but they have pleasure in them that do them. But that is not our God. Our God is merciful. Our God is merciful. And he shows mercy to all men. Jesus Christ died on the cross for all men. All women. Jesus Christ died on the cross for all men and all women. He's merciful. He's merciful. Verse 1 of chapter 2. Therefore, thou art inexcusable, O man, whoever you are that judges. For wherein you judge another, you condemn yourself. For you that judge, do the same things. God is merciful. God is merciful. We are merciful. We do not judge. Because we're merciful. Because God has shown us mercy, we are merciful. We do not judge. We don't judge people. The judgment for all sin was poured out on Jesus Christ. But there are many that haven't accepted it and have rejected God and his word. And God turned them over. Now, that doesn't mean that there isn't any hope for them. But the hope will come through you and I who show mercy. And Pastor and I were having a conversation the other day about naming things. Naming things. Just like we just talked about naming certain sicknesses that try and attack your body, you rename it, what God tells you to name it. God told me to call it an intruder, and I called it an intruder and dealt with it, and it was over. But it's the same with people. People are not homosexuals. They are not lesbians. They are children of God. They're practicing homosexuality, but we can't get the act confused with the person. Same with adulterers and, and those kinds of things. Murderers. People are children of God because Jesus shed his blood for all men. Merciful. To the merciful. Be merciful. The Lord has given me a strong warning not to think like everyone thinks. That's regarding every subject. Not just our favorite scriptures, our pet scriptures, our, pets, our pet subjects. It's everything. The way God sees things. Yes, he hates sin. But that's why Jesus came. Jesus came to pour out his blood for those sins. We just have to watch that we're not saying the same thing the world is saying. We want to say what God says. Joshua 1.8. Meditate on his word, say what he says, and act like he acts. Bestow mercy, show mercy, talk like God, think like God, act like God, and then you'll push forward and break out. 
push forward and break out. Okay, one more verse. 1 Timothy chapter 4. Paul again is writing. This time he's writing to Timothy. Timothy is a young pastor. <clears throat> so Paul's giving him some instruction. This is the verse where I shared last week. I will, verse 8 of chapter 2, I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up merciful hands. That word holy there is actually word merciful. I will therefore, verse 8 of chapter 2, I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up merciful hands without wrath and doubting. Merciful hands. And then he goes into talking on chapter 3 about um, desiring the office of a bishop and the qualifications and things that uh, you must observe in people. And it, it is declaring that these people are following God. You know they're following God because of their behavior. See? Your behavior doesn't get you into heaven, but once you're born again, your behavior should change because you're following God. You're hanging out with somebody different. All right, um, so we're going to go um, start with verse 16 of chapter 3. Without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, and received up into glory. Verse 1 of chapter 4, same letter. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter days, the latter times, that's where we are, in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. In the latter days some will depart from the faith, giving heed. That means they're listening to something other than God. Giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. And then it lists all the things. We've already seen many of these things, forbidding to marry and so on and so forth, all the denominations that practice certain things. But it says here, verse 7, but you refuse profane and old wives' fables and exercise yourself Unto godliness, think like God thinks. For bodily exercise profits little, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having the promise of life that now is and that which is to come. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation. <clears throat> For therefore we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living God. We will suffer reproach because we trust in the living God, who is the Savior of how many men? All men, especially of those that believe. He's the Savior of all men, but not everybody believes. He's the Savior of all men, especially of those that believe. These things command and teach let no man despise your youth. And I'm talking to a lot of people in this room. Let no man despise your youth, but be an example of the believers. In what? In word, what you're saying. In conversation, that's what you're living. Conversation is lifestyle. So be an example in word, what you're saying. In conversation, in what you're living. And in charity, that's love. And in spirit, in faith, and in purity. Till I come, give attention to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Neglect not the gift that is in you, which was given to you by prophecy with the laying on of the hands of the presbytery. Meditate, there's that word. Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them, that thy profiting may appear to all. As you meditate and give yourself to all these things that Paul's exhorting Timothy, that's when your prospering will appear to all. 
You're pushing forward and breaking out. You're succeeding in life. Your walking kingdom life will become evident to other people as you do those things. Your walking in kingdom life will appear evident because you're thinking like God, you're talking like God, and you're acting like God. Amen? See, Jesus has done all the heavy lifting for us. He did all the heavy lifting. And then when he rose from the dead, that enabled the spirit of life to come and live inside of us. So he's the one that can help us walk all of these things out. Remember, Galatians says, walk in the spirit and you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. Well, that's as easy as it says it is. Walk in the spirit and you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh because you walk in the spirit. In other words, you're being led of the spirit. You're staying connected to his spirit. You're not thinking like a man thinks. You're thinking like God thinks because you're listening to him. I, ha I had an example uh, years ago. Pastor and I were having an intense fellowship. <laughs> we were living in Texas, and we were having intense fellowship. And, uh, man, I wanted to give him a piece of my mind. I really did. I wanted to give him a piece of my mind. And the Lord said, don't say that. I said, what? That's what I heard. I heard it as clear as could be. Don't say that. Don't say that. So I didn't say it. And I am certain it thwarted off a big to-do. I'm certain it did. Because I obeyed the spirit. You know, one of the one of the lusts of the flesh is anger. It is. Yeah. So if we if we are walking in the spirit, he'll alert us to these things. Don't say that. Don't go that way. Don't do that. I'll help you. Say this. Say this. He's been helping me so much with my family. Yeah, he's just been saying, tell him this. Tell him that. Send him this. Send him that. Do this. Do that. He's directing everything. But if I said, oh, thanks, I got it, and went and did it my way, I wouldn't have any results. And there would be no fruit that he would get credit for. Exactly. So it's, it's, it's easier than, than we think. We just, I think we just get caught up sometimes in the cycle of life, the circle of life, the, the, the flow of life. And we just, just got to go, hold up, wait a minute. I see it. Okay, I've been caught up. I haven't had some stinking thinking. I, I've been surrounding myself with the wrong thing. I've been listening to popular opinion, or we've been dialoguing in our groups about this or that. You gotta, you know, you gotta help each other. I didn't even have time to get to Hebrews, where it talks about Jesus being our merciful high priest, and and then it talks about that's why you don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together because you help each other. You don't commiserate and talk over the subject that you're ticked off about. No, instead you say, man, I really, I really need help. I need, to think, I need to think like God thinks on this situation. And, and, I'm, and I'm having a little trouble because I'm so uh, caught, yeah, caught up in, in this situation. Yeah. And your brothers and sisters can encourage you and go, you know, you're not walking alone. I know what you mean, but we're not going to talk about it. We're just going to glorify God. We're going to talk about what he says. We, do we believe what he says? What do you believe? Tell me what you believe. Let's, let's, let's do that. Instead of co-miserating. Misery loves company. Yeah. So instead, be mindful of what's coming out your mouth. Remember, let not his word depart from your mouth. Keep his word in your mouth. 
he, I remember hearing when I was a kid, if you can't say nothing nice, don't say nothing at all. I don't agree with that because it says keep the word in your mouth. So you should be talking the word, talking the word, talking the word, talking the word, talking the word. And I'm not talking about quoting King James. <laughs> right? Yeah, I'm not talking about quoting King James. Thus is this is thither. Blah, blah, blah. He loves you. He's for you. He lives in you. Just a readjustment. Slipping to one side, not thinking like God thinks, believing something about a situation, go, wait a minute. You know, I think I got caught up in emotion about that situation, and I really need to get God's perspective on that. So take a step back and say, God, what, what's, your, what's your perspective on this? Show me your ways here. Because he'll help us. Adjust, make adjustment. Time is short. And we got work to do. And he's helping us. He's helping us get ready. And the good news is he's returning for a church that has no spot or wrinkle. So we know we got this thing licked. Right? Because that's what he's coming back for. We win. And he's coming back. <laughs>